Welcome to Learn About Eyes video rounds. I'm Laurent Kuske, a glaucoma, cataract, and complex anterior segment surgeon based in Switzerland but trained in Canada by Ike Ahmed. In this series, I take real surgical footage, slowed down, annotated, and explained to show you the fine details of surgical technique, decision making, and complication management. So let's dive right in. Here we have a small pupil floppy iris case. Let's have a look. You can see the pupil is really small. I was probably ahead of schedule, so the drops didn't really do much yet. Um, you can see it in real time speed, but I will skip forward a bit. And here I'm injecting some migraine. That is tropicamide, phenylephrine, and lidocaine. And you can see the pupil starts dilating here. But even after re-injecting from the other side, that's as big as we get. We're filling the AC with dispersive viscoelastic, creating the incision. Then these cases are pretty easy for the rexis. You want to be as big or just slightly bigger than the pupil. You have a nice stencil here. We're done with the rexis. And this is something I want to talk about. In these floppy iris cases, you need to take care about iris prolapse. You can basically expect iris prolapse to happen if you're not careful. And one of the first steps it happens is hydrodissection. Why is that? If you see the lens, if you imagine the lens um, from the side or the whole, the whole eye from the side, you're going to have your lens here, your iris here, and then your cornea. And if you're injecting water behind the lens, this will push the lens forward. And at the same time, because you're pressing on that wound, this will release some viscoelastic to the outside of the eye. So the pressure gradient is clearly in this direction and that will take the iris out of the eye and make it prolapse. So here we can see that happening. I'm already kind of aware of that. And you can already see I'm releasing some of the BSS behind the lens. I'm redoing it again. And now here you just saw there's iris prolapse happening here. Now, what do we do? What do we do in these situations? Do we just go out and try to push the iris back in? No, we don't. Um, very important to imagine what's happening here pressure wise. So we have a lot of pressure from that lens going forward. Um, and just pushing the iris back in will not help and it, it'll just create holes in the iris. Um, so what you want to do is change the pressure gradient. Of course, outside the eye, pressure is zero or just um, atmospheric pressure. Inside the eye, it's higher. So you want to lower the pressure inside the eye and behind the iris. So first thing you do is push on that lens release all that BSS behind the lens and then also release some of the viscoelastic and you can see when you do that iris goes back in without anything. Now I'm refilling the wound, the area before in front of the wound with some viscoelastic otherwise you can get another iris prolapse when you've entered it with a phaco probe and you can create a iris defect in these cases. I'm just cleaning up the anterior cortex a bit. I do a chop technique in almost any case. Um, might not be perfect for the beginner, but you can see if you're comfortable chopping, this is a good um, method to use. This is real time, but I will skip forward in a bit. You can just see second quadrant is done. Finish that first chop third quadrant and then we'll take that out. I think I'm having some rebound there so that means it's not perfectly chopped yet and it's going through a rather small rexis that's also a bit of a challenge to get out the first quadrant. Okay so we're just removing all the quadrants here. Now in these cases with a small pupil like this you want to make sure your phaco probe doesn't do too many 
side and side to side and back to front movements so you want to stay in that pupil area and just use the chopper to feed the the ki uh, the pieces and not go get it with your phaco probe because those floppy irises they will come and enter your enter your uh, phaco probe very very easily now look at that the pupil is no longer round it's kind of peaked here that's not because of vitreous prolapse that is because of iris prolapse here into the para now what i'm doing i'm doing that in any case in every case i'm just flushing that back in and i'm trying to stabilize the ac while i exit with my phaco probe but at the same time in this case it was probably not the best idea because what I'm what am I doing? I'm increasing the pressure in the AC, and what happens? Iris prolapses here. So again, what's my reaction? It's not to push this iris back in. My reaction is to lower the pressure inside the eye. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to release some of the aqueous, some of the BSS, same here, and then again here. I'm not going in straight because this will just poke a hole into the iris. I will go in at an angle trying to go past that iris and then use the blunt side to kind of sweep it in. So basically go in past the iris and sweeping it in while releasing pressure, while releasing aqueous from inside the eye to the outside. So you can see that. Yep and it's again inside. Now just refilling the eye just a little bit and we can go to our cortex aspiration. You can see, oh, that might be a good thing that you can, that we can explain here as well. Watch a pupil size once I turn on the irrigation here. Why is the pupil so much bigger with the irrigation? We do have a reverse pupil block here, very common with those uh, floppy iris cases. How can Im you imagine that? If you have your capsule here and you have your iris, if you increase the pressure and it's a very floppy big iris, the iris will be pushed against the capsule and block all the fluid going back and this will just increase the depth of the AC and create a bigger pupil because then the pressure inside the AC is quite high. Um, in these cases this is actually very beneficial. In other cases with a very deep AC that might be a problem and then what you can do is you just use an instrument um, and you go underneath here and just lift up that iris and that pupil block will release. So let's keep going. We're just aspirating. Now this is done blindly in these cases, so you have to be very careful. You have to know where you're uh, you have to know where you're going and you have to be very comfortable with your foot pedal. Now we can see some ballooning happening here and here. So I'm just using a chopper. I usually use a chopper, just hook uh, the conch here and rip it open. This will usually just help to release some of that flow. And you wanna do this early before the whole conch is ballooned up. You wanna do this um, as early as possible. And again, watch that small pupil. Boom, big pupil now with the reverse pupillary block. Now you can just see I'm not grabbing the, the cortex here, so I have to check where is it starting, where am I going to grab it, and then I get it. We're changing to the other side. Basically doing exactly the same thing here. And then we want to be checking. Can you see here? We're checking whether, uh, whether there's any... Um, cortex left. 
I'm just flushing a little bit with BSS, refilling the AC with viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic at this point because we want to easily remove it afterwards after we've implanted the lens. And here that's a good learning point as well. In these cases, you don't want to fill the bag first. Imagine again, this is your bag and this is your AC with the iris here. And, and maybe this is the cornea. If you're filling the bag first, it will just make the iris go forward and prolapse. So what you want to do in these cases, you want to fill the AC first, not overfill it, but then fill the, the bag. This way you have a stable AC when you fill the bag and you're not overfilling the bag. Usually I fill the bag first. So this is what I'm doing here. Gently filling the AC and then the bag, not overfilling, making sure there's no prolapse. And then we go in with our lens. You can see I'm just using the IA to place the lens in the bag. And then very important, check whether the haptics are inside the bag or not. You can use your uh, Kuglin hook or your IA for this if you have a bimanual. And then a very common place uh, or a very common mo moment for another iris prolapse is this one right here. When you go behind the lens to remove the viscoelastic, it usually prolapses here through the main wound. So what I do in these cases is I hydrate the main wound before I go behind the lens. So you can see here, I'm just hydrating. This irrigation is now off. And then you can see when I turn it on, pupil dilates. I can go behind. Take out all the viscoelastic. Reposition the lens. Really make sure I have it inside the capsule. These are the ones where, where it's very easy to have one haptic in the sulcus and not realize it. And you can see there I aspirated the, lens, uh, the iris a bit to, to be able to visualize a bit better. But now I'm fairly confident that the, the lens is fully in the bag. I'm hydrating the wounds. All right, and then I'm using, I'm always using a, a uh, wax cell to, to check whether the wounds are leaking or not. And then I'm injecting some antibiotics and then we're done with the case. That was it for this video. Thank you for watching. Do you still have any comments about that surgery? Please use the comment section down below to ask your questions or add additional information. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Have you heard about my online courses? If not, please check them out in the link in the description down below. See you in the next one.